So for all the duties of a pastor, one that might surprise you is also one that I really delight in. And surprise is sort of at the heart of it. And here's how it happens. Something happens to you that shakes you up. And it shakes you up enough to shake your faith too, and you end up in my office. And then it begins. You tell me that you can't understand why God would do this or that. Or you tell me that you, you're having a hard time even believing anymore. Or you come back from college after taking a class in Bible and you find out that the Babylonians had a flood story before Noah in the Old Testament and you don't know what to do with that. Or you wonder, do I have to believe in the story of the biblical creation happening that way in light of scientific evolution? And you get all disoriented and there you are and it's right about that moment that I say, perfect. You are in such a good position right here and you look at me like I'm crazy because you feel lost. But this is what we do as pastors. This is one of the fun things. I mean, there's the preparing and preaching of sermons and lessons, and there's the caring for the sick and the dying, and the managing of budgets and staff, and there's the, you know, moving out in mission to the community, and the praying, and the studying, and all those sorts of things. It's big work, often awesome. get ready for this. But one of the things that we really love is helping you move through stages of faith. And just the very idea of stages of faith is surprising to some of Especially if you think all you need is some of that old-time religion over and over and over again. Sorry, I told you it was coming. <laughs> but if you think about it, this whole idea about stages of faith shouldn't surprise you. And if you think about it now, ahead of time to your next crisis of faith, it should help prepare you as a matter of fact. Because growing into a more mature faith is a good thing, not a bad thing. In fact, the worst thing is to actually get stuck in an earlier stage of faith and stop making progress at all. It would be the spiritual equivalent of a grown man who still goes around wearing his high school letter jacket. Or a 40-ish year old woman who's still behaving like a cheerleader. It just doesn't fit. And this idea of faith stages actually fits nicely into this summer series we've been doing called Everyday Faith. And we've been looking at how faith helps us to live every day with respect to areas of life, like our spiritual life, and then our, our family life, and our work life, our friendship life, our civic life, uh, all these sorts of things. And, and, and next week we'll be looking at how it connects to church life. But today, the important thing I think to remember is that like everything else in life that changes, in order for everyday faith to be vital and strong every day, it too needs to change. 